So this episode of Maria the Virgin Witch. Another very good episode. Like, th this series astounds me by the week. Like, it continues to drag me in and entertain me. And I, I didn't think I would enjoy the series as much as I have been enjoying it. And it's certainly becoming one of my favorite series to watch on a Sunday. And that's surprising. I, I did not expect a series titled Maria the Virgin Witch to really catch me like it's doing now and it's really building up into a very very good plot and this episode can be once again slightly deep and I, I didn't expect that I, I didn't like this series just surprises me with the paths it has taken since the very first episode because it just it doesn't seem at first glance when you first watch the first episode like it'd be this type of story but it's really building up into something very nice so let's just talk about some certain things that happened this episode so Obviously, one of the main things you see, once again, building up in this episode is the church, the uh, Church of France or whatever. They're actually discovering more and more secrets about Moria, and the dude, like the priest or whatever, he finds out about Moria's secret. If she was to have sex or pretty much lose her virginity to anyone, she would lose her magic. And you can clearly tell in this episode one specific scene where the priest, you know, walks in, he starts laughing and all that. It just goes to show you he actually found out, and, you know, the mercenary dude that was saved last week he told Mario's secret to the priest and the priest now knows and so he's going to use that so I wonder how the priest is going to take that because if you think about it he says like pure Mario which you know he was putting these words out and it's very ironic if you think about it. I mean in the church's days you know a virgin a witch one pure that that's like you know heresy to the to the church it really is and so i wonder how he's actually taking that i mean is he going to use that to corrupt maria or is he just so flabbergasted he's like what the hell like he doesn't know how to accept it i mean i wonder what his perspective is going to be from this point forward if that is what i think it is like he could either try to manipulate it to where he can probably make Mario lose her powers and then he can burn her. Because now he knows a weakness to Mario. Because if he gets her to have, you know, sex with anyone, she'll lose her powers. I and mean, he can instantly just fry her on, you know, a pike. That, that's what he can do. And so, we'll have to see where that section of the story goes. But that's definitely going to lead into one of the main crucial points of the series. So, another thing. In this episode, you have a lot of, you know, conflicting matters going on in this episode. Like, Mario, she's in a spot. In this episode, she she can't really help out her people. Like, she was told by the person she admires and kind of loves. They're destined to be together later on in the series. She gets told by the person she loves that you shouldn't interfere with this upcoming fight because if we win this fight, we will probably stop all wars in the region, which is a load of bullshit because, I mean, it's in human nature. Wars do not stop no matter what. You can never stop war. So, the point of it is, is... Mario is in a conflicting spot right now, but she's being told by the person she loves and admires that she should not interrupt this fight. And even though she doesn't want to, you know, make him mad, she has to go against her own ideals and what she truly feels about the situation just to satisfy him. But in the very end, her overall ideals overcame her love for the person she cared about. So, it just goes to show you the perspective of how Mario feels about this. And I mean... Once again, another conflicting type of, uh, like, episode, because it just shows you the different perspectives. Like, Moria, she cares so much about stopping wars that she was willing to cast aside her promise with the person she loved. Like, she didn't, you know, fulfill what he said, like, you know, le stay out of this war and let us win. So it just shows you that that's how much she truly cares about her ideals when it comes to stopping wars. And on top of that, we also get to see how our little dove, you know, our little dove familiar, as you know, some of them call it in this episode. Pretty much our little dove familiar, she... She is being forced to actually kill Maria if she uses her magic, like, to finish her, take her to heaven and stuff like that. So, we have another little plot point building up in this episode alongside with the church's, you know, viewpoint on this. So, I wonder, at the end of the day, what is really going to happen because Maria is taking a path that's not good because, I mean, we understand as a viewer's perspective, we understand where she's coming from, but... I wonder what is really going to happen to Mori. I mean, she's in a really bad situation. She has the heavens against her. She has the people against her. She's pretty much by herself. And none of her fellow witches really understand her either because they're all in it for the, the money. So, it's a really conflicting episode because you don't know what really will happen. I wonder if this series, since it's already been finished as I've been told, 
if Moria might die in the very end or something, or sacrifice herself to stop wars, or, you know, something along the lines of that, because the way it's building up, the way these episodes have been, it feels like it's going towards that direction, and, yeah. It also, in this episode, it actually foreshadows that maybe, you know, the person that Moria loves might die in this war, and if he does die, imagine what would happen there, like, imagine how, like, mad or sad or depressed Mario would be if she lost a person she loved because she didn't interrupt the war he said not to interrupt. She would also be very upset. Like, what if she arrives to the battlefield to notice that he is dead? So, that also was foreshadowed with this episode, so I wonder if they're trying to lead it towards that direction. But overall, that's pretty much this episode of Mario the Virgin Witch. It was a very, very good episode. Once again, it's shockingly good. It really is. I, I truly recommend... Mario the Virgin Witch. If you have yet to start, and this is your first review seeing me talk about the series, you need to go start it. It's really good. So tell me your thoughts in the comments below. You all have a wonderful day or not wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.